Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network, as we are talking to Morning Star Senior Living at Laurelhurst and the staff of Kilea and Tiana, and they are giving us all kinds of information about this amazing new community in the Northwest sector of Portland, which is a established neighborhood of Laurelhurst. And ladies, welcome back to the show. We have been talking a little bit about your community, about assisted living and a day in the life of somebody that lives in assisted living. So all your needs are taken care of if you need help and and that's important. So let's move on to memory care. Um, Huge statistics right now going on, new statistics that are just come out with the Alzheimer's Association about the progression of Alzheimer's disease, how it's going to be affecting um, by the year 2060, about 15% of our population, which is just crazy. Um, Good news is, is there are some, you know, there's some promise out there that's being made in treatment, but obviously there's a lot of seniors now, I believe about one in every nine people are, um, are uh, suffering from Alzheimer's disease, anyone over the age of 75. And that's according to the Alzheimer's Association. So chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know somebody with Alzheimer's disease. Um, Doesn't take too far to look if it's only one in nine people over the age of 75. So um, tell us a little bit, before we get into your memory care, you know, area or quality of care, give us a philosophy about the lavender sky. I know we've done a whole show on it, but I love the the just the quality and mindfulness that has gone into this amazing class of service for seniors. Lavender Sky is our signature program that we are um, embrace um, for our team members um, to train our team members how to approach uh, resident in memory care. Mm-hmm. Um, the program is fabulous to provide a lot of resources for our team member, how to explore and embrace uh, yeah. approach um, is, is wonderful. And then each team member before they actually be on the floor and assist our resident uh-huh. and go through the lavender sky training. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting because this extra layer, you may come into it of having a degree in gerontology and focus on dementia, but you really are, you guys take it to the next level. And, uh, you know, right now that's what's so important that there's just so much attention to um, taking care of those with, uh, you know, with dementia. And there's so many medical breakthroughs that you guys are at the pulse of and providing, you know, therapies and different things like that, that, you know, a typical community may not even know about yet. You guys have this structure in place that really provides the best care possible for the seniors. So tell us a little bit about if I'm waking up and memory care, obviously there's a lot of trepidation with seniors as far, you know, with families about, you know, it's hard to let go. And when I've been trying to take care of mom or dad or husband or wife um, who may have Alzheimer's disease, um, there's a lot of obviously so many people that are unpaid caregivers that are taking care of loved ones with dementia, but there's that reticence of not wanting to let go. Um, How, you know, how do you find it, you know, the best way to integrate into a community like that? And, you know, what's your message to these families? Ideally, you'll start before um, uh, that transition is really needed. I, th- that's a mm-hmm. huge part of, of the Morningstar at Laurelhurst is having the assisted living mm-hmm. and the ability to transition to memory care if that need arises. Right. So, uh, and for the, the, the husbands and wives and, and, um, and daughters and sons and their spouses and their grandchildren and everyone who is 
oftentimes being uh, that unpaid caregiver or they're mm -hmm. using, you know, their resources to have caregivers at home or whatever the situation is. At some point, the, the level of care that is needed is more than what one person can do. Very true. Uh, and 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 the environment, no matter what you um, you know think you have in place, oftentimes you know um, is not the safest environment. So our, right. our 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 whole philosophy and our whole structure, our building from the ground up, is built mm -hmm. around safety um, and security. Yeah, yeah. And I think what you're saying is really important because um, I think did I the majority of people that have dementia and Alzheimer's are being cared for by people that are untrained staff. They're unpaid family caregivers, whether it's a spouse or a son or a daughter. Um, the challenge with that is, is that in oftentimes just in the interest of safety, um, they don't take them out. They don't take them, you know, places because they're afraid for their safety. They don't, you know, they can't necessarily cook for themselves. So you're constantly having to make sure that they get proper nutrition. But every day is different. You know, if you're living with somebody with dementia and trying to take care of them, <clears throat> there's this fear of what if they hurt themselves in their home? Um, you know, what if they <laughs> start a fire? What if they do, uh, there's there's story after story that I've heard obviously working with families of, you know, but I promised mom or dad that I would never quote unquote, you know, take them to a place like this. And yet they're not safe in their environment. So you promise them, I always tell people, you promise them with the knowledge that you had before. But if you said to somebody, you know, back before they had their cars saying, I'll never get in one of those things, you know, you'll never, the point is the world changes. And obviously you want to do the most important thing is do right by your loved one. And I think this is where families sometimes get lost. They get, they don't know necessarily on how to best serve their loved one. And so that therein is where I think some of the things, the questions get. So uh, now if you guys are in a memory care scenario, I, I think you said you have room for 32 residents in your community that are memory care, which is a perfect size. It's not huge. And tell us a little bit about your memory care um, area. Our memory care is located on a second level. It's a beautiful neighborhood that have a um, very bright, uh, very um, a, a lot of lighting for for the, mm -hmm. the resident and very open. So <clears throat> allow the resident to be able to move in around. Mm -hmm. um, That's and important. That, yeah, and also have a a living room area and the dining room area for resident to be part of it's, it's a family. It's a family. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a, it's a beautiful memory care um, um, neighborhood. And I think that our designer um, have done a wonderful job to, to make sure the neighborhood very bright, yeah. a lot of lights. Um, and um, like you mentioned about earlier, um, when adding to Kalea talking about what message we want to talk to the, the family, right? Um, you know, adding to that is we want to make sure the family know that the only time way that we can be success that we need to have the partnership with the family. Amen. So we, yeah. And so mm. we want to welcome the family input. We want a family to be part of the, the care. Yeah. Um, so, and then with the message, we also talk to the family about like, you know, let us, the, 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 the person that train how to deal with dementia, Alzheimer, mm -hmm. to take care of your loved one. So when you come in to visit, you would be, um, a children, you would be, um, a wife or the husband, um, to spend time with their loved one, um, instead of be a tired um, yeah. Caregiver. yeah. Yes. Well, and I think one of the things that you really hit the nail on the head with is the fact that, you know, involving the family is so huge because there may quite possibly be a time where your loved one cannot speak for themselves. And so you, we need your voice on, you know, 
what are your what are their favorite foods why are they not eating right you know what's what's what are, what do we need to fix here and i think you know having that dialogue with the family that always is there as their is their anchor point to make sure that you guys have a partnership in that care. You feel like you're part of the team. And I think that's really um, an important dynamic is really knowing that there's that three legged legged stool. Yes. There's the, there's the loved one that is there that has Alzheimer's and there's the care team with the community, but that third leg is the family. They're the ones that advocate for their loved one and make sure that they are in the best scenario possible. And I think that's one of the things you guys do so well um, is working with families. And I've seen so many times I walk in to a Morningstar community and I see all kinds of families there. It's a very welcoming environment and certainly you encourage people. So how do we reach you? Through our website, uh, which is MorningstarSeniorLiving.com. And uh, also you can call us directly. Our office number is 971-544-8100. Fabulous. And for those of you, if we're looking for, you're looking for a place to live for your loved one, think about Morningstar. And I, you know, I, I want to go through and I want to talk a little bit about in our next segment about community. Uh, Morningstar is huge in the community, not only on a um, local level, which we're going to talk about, but we're going to also talk about a little bit about the two found, foundational um, outreach programs that Morningstar does. We're going to touch on that in our next program. So you can feel good about the type of community that your loved one lives in because they are really doing a lot of great things for the community. So again, reaching them at MorningstarSeniorLiving.com and we'll be right back right after this. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.